I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. September and October are all about winding down from the summer garden. We've come full circle since May 5th when the garden looked pretty much like this, bare. <laughs> Let's see what's been happening and who's been visiting the late bloomer garden in the last two months. While some of your tomatoes and squash can extend into late October if you're in a warm climate, for the most part it's time to start breaking down the summer garden to prepare for cool season planting. Nothing helps that more than a little rain. This is the first shower since May. I didn't have the heart to pull out the amaranth until the goldfinches had had their fill. Not even a garbage truck deterred them from digging for the tiny seeds. <laughs> One drawback of planting bird-loving plants right beside your fence, there are a lot of droppings. And so the first week of September, the amaranth got pulled. I had a little help with cleanup. Mid-August, I drove out to visit a friend and check out her volunteer squash patch. This is my friend Dorothy, and she lives in Sherman Oaks, where it's what, maybe 10 to 15 degrees hotter? on Sometimes a 20. The regular yeah. basis than where I live. Yeah. And I wanted to see if she had the same problem with uh, mildew and leaf wilt that I have. Seems like I do. <laughs> I do. So let's go check out her garden. But I don't do anything about it. I just let it go. All of the squash. The whole, everything behind me is volunteer. It just came up on its own. Wow. I put the compost on. I was going to plant lettuce and tomatoes and other things. And then all of these sweet little plants came up and I didn't have the heart to kill them. I just let them grow. I wanted to see what would come up. What is this one? What is that one? I'm seeing a lot of mildew here, Dorothy. Oh, so all over. Do you just, uh, because you have so much space, you just don't worry about I just it? leave or? it. I mean, it just, it's an experiment. <laughs> you can see, actually, the garden starts over here. This is where the garden starts, right here is where earth is. This is all lawn that has been taken over. Dorothy's carefree attitude yielded some enormous fruit. I never bought one of these. The hybrid will often go back to its original, which is probably what's happened. It's a large squash. And I roasted it with garlic, uh, tomatoes, mm -hmm. and onions. Did I put spices on there? And it, it was lovely on pasta. Dorothy said the only time she had leaf wilt was when it was 100 degrees. Yeah, and then in the evening they would per perk up again. I didn't do a thing. I didn't cover them. I didn't do anything. I'm all planned and she's all abstract. <laughs> it's free whatever flowing. comes up. <laughs> well, thanks for being a late bloomer. Oh, you're welcome. I am a late bloomer. Well, I used to garden years ago. My mother was a gardener. Mm -hmm. She had a vegetable garden. Did you start late like me? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I returned to the late bloomer garden determined to stop mildew in its tracks by spraying a natural fungicide for organic gardens and salvage what was left of my cucurbits. This was not the best sprayer for the job. I found a better one. I did two applications over a period of two weeks. And even though there was new growth on the end of melon and pumpkin vines, and things looked promising, especially with zucchini, the mildew came back with a vengeance, and the sow bugs literally ate the surface off of my melons. I trimmed off as many leaves as I could off my zucchini without killing the plants. I finally pulled out my pumpkins and melons mid-September. Was it worth all that effort to wind up with one little pumpkin? Yeah. <laughs> I went to the National Heirloom Expo in September, and when I returned, I had white fly infestations on my blackberry and citrus. If you looked under a microscope, you could probably see the entire life cycle of the white fly in this ball of fuzz. White fly looks a lot like mealybug. If you look closely and see clear, flat wings, those are the white fly adults. 
in just a few days, cabbage worms devoured this broccoli plant. It's like they become the color of the plant they're eating. They are so well camouflaged, I didn't see them till they had eaten most of the leaves. Early one morning, they were having a convention. <laughs> I decided it was too far gone, and I didn't feel like squishing 22 worms. Aphids were relentless on the milkweed. I will be more proactive spraying early and often next year. This lady beetle laid eggs near a mass of aphids. Lady beetle larvae can eat 400 aphids during development. Lady beetles can eat 5,000 aphids in their lifetime. It seems like there's always something eating something. Late bloomer lesson, be observant. I pulled out all the dried corn stalks off the back 40 end of August. Corn is a heavy feeder and depletes nitrogen. I added a lot of compost and let the bed rest for a month. Legumes replace nitrogen. I planted a cover crop of buckwheat to refix the nitrogen. Because I'm getting some bug damage to my sprouts, I'm spraying all of my seedlings with diatomaceous earth powder, commonly known as DE. Not to be deterred by pest and pestilence, I'm forging on with my winter garden. I planted my first group of brassicas that I grew from seed. I've got radishes, herbs growing, garlic sprouting, and all these left to plant. Kale, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, parsnip, parsley, hyssop, onion. I'm seeding these in pure DE. You can never let it go dry. I have a ton of seeds still to plant. These are all my cool season, non-GMO, organic varieties. Mm, beets, bok choy, chard. Ugh, I really need to plant this. This is endive, seeds I got from the Seed Library of Los Angeles. I hung a trellis for sweet peas and planted three varieties, and I have four more varieties to plant. I love peas. Last night I planted a bed of carrot seed, two beds of onion seedlings, and I planted radish and beet seed in between the rows of the buckwheat. Because I want to get everything I can out of that back 40 there. If this has been helpful or entertaining, please leave me a comment and share with friends. I'm Kay, I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. or entertaining, please leave me a comment. Michael, let me say that one more time. There's my friend, <laughs> one of a million. Wow, it's quiet. I should do it like 10 more times. What did you think of those outtakes? <laughs> Michael's got a big voice. What did you think of the amaranth? Pretty tasty. <laughs>